If you're someone that loves a beta from Android, then you'll be happy to hear that Android 16 Beta 1 has just dropped. And it's almost as if Google didn't want all the attention being on Samsung and the Galaxy S25 launch. Now, if you want to download this, this is currently limited to Pixel devices for now. And you can download this for all those supported Pixels, which is everything from the Pixel 6 all the way up to the latest Pixel 9 series. So if you have any of those Pixels, you can go to that beta website and opt in now but please make sure that you back up all of your data before you think about putting a beta on your phone because it is a beta so it is unstable and it just means that things on your phone that you usually use every single day might just not work if you upgrade to the beta and if you're curious about the timeline and when we might see a more stable version of android 16 that might be slightly safer to put onto your phone well google has given us that so what you can see is that it'll be a couple of months before we get anything that is stable and that final release will come sometime after April. But let's have a look at some of the more notable upgrades when we're looking at Android 16 Beta 1 and this is probably one of my favourite ones that we've seen in quite a while and it is live updates. This is probably the biggest addition to Android 16 Beta 1 and this isn't groundbreaking of course because it's very similar to what Apple does with iPhones and its live activities and we've had that since iOS 16 and it's similar to what Samsung just showed off with the S25s. And essentially apps such as food delivery, Uber, which you can see here, or like navigation apps, will be able to show real time lock screen notifications, which actually come in really handy when those notifications are tracking a bit of food or a ride. And you can just see what is going on and where it is at a glance instead of having to unlock your phone. Now, I'm really excited about this coming to Android 16 because it's something that Apple does really well on iOS with the iPhone. And again, I know this is not new. It's not like Google have invented this, but it is something which I think that has been missing from Android phones for a while. So I'm excited to see this come in a full release. Now, this will be of interest to you if you have a bigger screen device. So maybe like a Pixel 9 Pro Fold, for example, because Google is promising better app adaptability when it comes to those larger screen devices. What Google is doing here is it's actually phasing out the ability for apps to restrict screen orientation and resizability. Now, Google notes that this will be similar to what other OEMs have done for large screen devices, and it will just help you avoid letterboxing on these foldable devices as an example. And at the moment on Android 16, app developers can actually opt out of this and still force you to have those weird orientations and have those black bars at the side of those apps on foldable devices. However, when it comes to the Android release in 2026, app developers won't actually be able to restrict orientation and resizability. So Google is giving them a bit of a friendly nudge here and saying it's now time to start adapting those apps to those larger screen devices like the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. The next update is a little bit more exciting for people that want to take advantage of Pro Video. Android 16 is bringing in support for the APV codec. APV, or Advanced Professional Video Codec, is tipped as the new professional codec that aims to provide lossless video quality while using around about 20% less storage than existing formats, which is like HVC. And what I think people should be getting a little bit excited about here is that APV can actually produce significantly better video quality than HVC, especially at those higher bit rates, and it's kind of close to raw video quality. Android 16 is going to support the APV 42210 profile, which provides YUV422 color sampling, 10-bit encoding, and has target bit rates of up to 2 gigabits. So in a nutshell, that APV codec support means that we're going to be able to get much better quality in smaller file sizes. And I think this is something that you could get really excited about when it comes to Android 16. So for me, this is one of the bigger updates and probably one of the better updates that we're going to see. Moving on, for people that like to use those navigation buttons and haven't fully committed yet to swipe gestures, there is now going to be a predictive back support for those people using that three button navigation. What this does is it lets you preview where that back gesture will take you before you completely full action and we've seen this before way back on android 13 where you could enable this in the developer options and it was also enabled by default in android 15 but so far you're only able to use this if you're using that newer gesture navigation which i think most people are but there's definitely people that are still on that button navigation so with android 16 beta 1 a long press of that back button will just give you a little bit more of an idea of exactly 
exactly where it's going to take you before you fully commit to actually going back into the app. And a couple of things that you might also want to know about. So there's a new night mode indicator API that helps apps automatically adjust to low light environments when you're taking photos or taking videos. And this looks like it'll be available to any app wanting to take advantage of that API, but we don't know any specifics just yet. And Android 16 Beta 1 is also adding a new Ranger Manager, which really is used to help determine the distance and angle of supported hardware between the local device and that remote device. So theoretically, Basically, what this should mean is that we're going to get better device tracker support. So now you'll be able to pinpoint the tracker's distance and angle, which I think actually is a really nice little update. And alongside the Android 16 Beta 1 announcement, Google actually mentions that Samsung with the Galaxy S25 series have just announced these Google Gemini extensions. And if you missed this, Samsung showed us a few new ways which Android apps can integrate with Gemini. And Google is hoping to bring this to more OEMs more devices and more form factors and making it available on more apps. And sadly, I actually don't have many more details on this. Google didn't tell us much else, but this is actually really exciting news because it could mean that AI can do more tasks on your phone in the future thanks to these extensions. So this is something we're just going to have to keep our eye on. And that's just a couple of things to note with Android 16 Beta 1. And it's not the most exciting update. Updates never seem to be that exciting anymore. But the live updates that we're going to be able to get on Android 16, I think is probably one of the better updates that we've seen actually in quite a long time. I'm sure there's a few other things as well that we'll discover as we play around with Android 16. But remember, if you have a Pixel 6 to 9, you can download this now by going to the beta website and just signing up to the beta program. Beta 1 is rolling out now as of this video, but remember, if you only have one Pixel phone and you use it as your main phone, don't don't maybe just do the update just yet because it could just make your phone unusable. So you just need to be careful. And if you do update it, just make sure that you back up all of your data as well. But let me know what you think about the Android 16 beta one. Is it something that you were looking forward to? And is it kind of just not giving you as much as you were hoping for? Anyway, before you head off, make sure you subscribe to the Android Authority channel. And if you do that, then I will see you in the next video.